Leather armor. So leather armor, um, if you play role playing games or play computer games, uh, leather armor is always the, the most basic level of armor that you can afford when you start to uh, get armor. And uh, this is quite a funny concept. Lindy Beige, uh, Lloyd, has spoken uh, quite a bit about leather armor. Um, and specifically in recently in regards to films, uh, filmmakers absolutely love to stick both men and women in slightly kinky looking kind of bondage-esque uh, leather armour that's not actually armour. Um, so leather, a piece of leather like you would have a leather jacket or a, perhaps the, the top leather of your shoes. Um, provides very little protection to sharp weapons. It provides no protection from maces and war hammers and pole axes and uh, spears. Uh, it provides almost or very little protection from the cuts of swords. Swords being relatively light, so they don't have a huge amount of percussive force unless they're big two-handed swords. Um, but they do nevertheless cut, and if you wrap a piece of leather around a test cutting target, you'll slice straight through it most of the time. And they provide practically no protection from points really. You can thrust a point of any pointy weapon straight through a piece of leather. So, leather armour essentially is, um, is bullshit. Okay? It's, it doesn't, didn't really exist as a thing, um, but it's something that movie makers uh, love because it's easy to make, cheap to make, you get like a leather jacket and stick some studs in it and yay, it looks like armour. But it doesn't function as armour. So, forget that. Leather armour did exist, but it wasn't that type of leather. The types of leather that were used were essentially rawhide, which is very thick, um, or buff leather, as it's sometimes known, which I believe is just a type of rawhide, maybe treated in a slightly different way, um, or what's known as queer bully, and I realise that a lot of people say queer bully, um, but it's a French word, and queer means leather, and bully means boiled. Um, so those three types are usually put into um, three different forms that we generally see. Okay? Um, the, the three common forms that we see in history are laminar armour, which are little uh, segments, little, like little plates, but they're made of thick leather. Um, it can be boiled leather or it can be just buff leather, and I think it was usually just buff leather, uh, rawhide essentially. Um, and uh, that, they were cut into small uh, sections uh, with holes in and laced together. And if you look at uh, Mongolian armour, for example, the Mongols were uh, very uh, fond of this kind of lamellar armour. And sometimes they used to mix in iron plates with the leather as well. So you maybe have three bits of leather, one bit of iron, three bits of leather, one bit of iron. And this forms a large, flexible, scale-like defence. It is not scale armour as such. That's something else that really the Romans and only a very few people used. But lamellar armour was very popular from Japan to Scandinavia uh, to Africa. It was popular all over the place, a uh, very good form of defence, uh, and even found as late as 1361 in, uh, in Europe in the Visby uh, mass graves in Gotland uh, in Sweden. Um, so we've got laminar armour, then secondly there's something called a buff coat. Buff coats were particularly popular in the Renaissance period um, uh, as a, essentially a light, cheap armour when guns have come in, so you accept that you know no real affordable armour is going to stop musket or, or arquebus bullets. So you think, okay, we'll just have a light armour that will prevent uh, pikes and sword cuts and things like that. And, and a buff coat is essentially uh, a sort of kind of sleeveless jacket made of very thick leather, much thicker leather than you see in the movies in general. And if you Google buff coat, you'll find examples. There are many examples uh, shown in art uh, and reconstructions from the English Civil War period. Very popular armour for pikemen, and sometimes worn with a breastplate on top as well. Um, and lastly, we've got queer bully. What is queer bully? Okay, queer bully. Um, boiled leather. To cut a long story short, no one knows for absolute certain how it was made. There are various people who've made modern reconstructions and it involves heat and it involves liquids, sometimes molten wax, sometimes water uh, and it involves of course rawhide and it has to be rawhide. You can't make kuyabuli really out of modern tanned leather, you have to get the rawhide material for it to work properly and the most convincing reconstruction I have seen done uh, was by master armourer Chris Dobson, a friend of mine, um, and he made kuyabuli um, copied off a 14th century artwork showing Kibuli plate armour in fact and 
I believe that he soaked the leather for a long time, then he pinned it to a wooden former, and then he put it in an oven for a very long period on quite a low heat. So essentially it sort of cooked the leather um, over a long period of time um, in, a, in a certain form. And the result was something like, and I've mentioned this in comments on one of my other videos, was something like hard plastic. It was slightly flexible, um, it wasn't incredibly hard but it was pretty hard uh, and it's something a bit like hockey armour or, or, or uh, riot police armour, this kind of consistency. Something that's flexible, relatively light, relatively cheap and will provide pretty good protection against cuts and thrusts. Okay, so there's a quick overview of leather armour. Thank you.